Hi guys, my name is Sarah. I'm the Real Simple Mama and we're going to be talking all about predators when it comes to backyard chickens. And so what I'm going to do, as per a lot of my educational videos, I'm going to teach you about different things to consider, different options of what you can do. But of course, depending on your situation, where you live, how many chickens you have, all that kinds of stuff, you may not need to do anything that I suggest. You may just pick and choose what works for you and for your flock. And if nothing else, it gives you some things to think about because what we're trying to do is protect not only our investment, but of course the lives of our little birds. And prevention is way better than you having to go back through and reevaluate all of your methods because you have had a loss of a bird. So I have done other videos about just checking for predators and things that you can do, but what this video is going to focus on more is specifically all of the different things you could potentially do to prevent predators. As far as building things or structures or what you would build and do for your coop and run. The other videos I've talked about, you know, here are the different kinds of predators and how you can tell if you've got one in the area and all that kinds of stuff. This one's gonna be focusing more on just these structures and what you need to do. So as far as talking about predators, I'm gonna identify just a couple of things really quickly first. In my situation, I have the chicken coop which is basically the structure where my chickens sleep at night and where they lay their eggs during the day. Other than that, mine are just in there because their food and water is under there because it's protected from the elements. But other than that, your chickens are not going to spend very much daylight time in there. What you're thinking about for the coop itself is for nocturnal predators, so keep that in mind. The other zone that we'll talk about is the chicken yard or the chicken run, and that's essentially the space that your birds have to be out during the day. Some people just have a dog kennel or like a, a very limited structure hooked up to the coop and that's the extent of what they've got. Some people let their birds free range and as we're going through this vernacular, free range just means you kind of just let them out and the parameters. Some people, you know, they have property or they have a yard. In my case, my chickens have a coop and then I let them out in the morning and then they have their entire yard or run or pen or whatever you want to call it, which is this space right here and they get all of that zone. So those are the two different areas where we're going to talk about predator proofing. The other thing, and I'm in South Texas, so some of the predators that I'll be talking about are red shoulder hawks or red tail hawks. There can be some owls if you've got chicks. Um, we have raccoons, coyotes, possums, and then of course you've got like the neighborhood feral cat or the dog that gets out from your neighbor's yard and that kind of stuff. But the other thing that we'll be talking about is there are basically three different ways that a predator would get into your chickens. The first way is that they would get in underneath something, whether it's the run fence like this, you know, this border area here or getting in under the chicken coop. The next way is they come in like through the middle and that's not really something you'd normally worry about with the run, right? That's something where you, you're thinking about like a raccoon grabbing at a chicken from like that window, for example, at night when they're locked up. And the third option, and in some ways the, the trickiest, is predators coming in from the air. And I know this sounds sort of like a military training video, but I would rather you have these options and you be thinking about things before you lose a bird, before there's an attack. So what I'm gonna show you first of all, and we're gonna talk about materials that I've used, strategies that I've had that have worked and have not worked. And if you're new to my channel, first of all, welcome. <laughs> I hope you don't regret it. But second of all, I've had chickens, backyard chickens for three years, and this is the third coop and run setup that I have had. Um, I have used coop kits because I have a small flock. I've only had a max of five or six birds at any one time. And so I've used two different coop kits. I have an entire coop playlist if you wanna see that, and coop building and all of that stuff. So we have had to use different measures at each place that we've lived because we've lived in three different homes and you know, just typical suburban neighborhoods with backyard chickens. So what I would like to do is just show you the coop right now because my chickens are up for the night. And like I said, we'll be talking about materials, we'll be talking about strategies that used to work or that didn't work or that worked now. Um, I also, just as my last disclaimer, I am not affiliated with anybody. Nobody gives me free stuff. I don't, you know, name brand drop anything where I get any kind of cut. So you can trust that everything that I'm saying is honest and truthful. Again, I'm in South Texas, so my vendors are going to be like, you know, tractor supply, but I will say that I also tend to be really frugal. So I'm not the kind of person who's going to tell you like, you need to go buy all of this stuff and it's really expensive like 
But one of my favorite stores is the Dollar Tree. So we want to be practical. We want to take care of our chickens. But this isn't going to be a video where I'm telling you to go spend hundreds of dollars. We're just going to try to be really smart. We're going to be crafty. We're going to be frugal. And we're going to think about what a predator might do. So if we're starting inward and we're starting on the coop itself, you're gonna be thinking about basically when your chickens are locked up here at night. Now that also includes if you go out and, lock and unlock them in the morning and you let them out in the morning, it's also gonna include when they're hanging out in the morning. But essentially we're talking about predators that are showing up at night. Now if you don't have any kind of game cam or outdoor cam or um, motion activated security, light or anything around your property it might be interesting for you to either buy one used or borrow one from a friend um, game cams and things like that are really neat because they only start recording when there's motion so it's not like you have to go through you know eight hours of footage of nothing it will usually turn on and you can change the settings but that way you kind of have an idea of what's in your area even in a neighborhood like this i have coyotes i have raccoons i have possums <clears throat> There are foxes. Like I said, we have feral cats and stuff in the area. So even if you live in civilization, don't assume that, you know, oh, there's nothing that's gonna get my chickens. You just need to be really careful. The other thing is if you're not a member of any kind of local, either online group or in-person group, um, I am not a fan of Facebook, but that's where my chicken groups live. So I still have a Facebook account basically just so I can go read about chickens. But just look for chicken groups in your area because they're gonna know you know, the temperature and the weather and the trends in the area and predators and they'll have strategies for you and they live in your area. So when we're talking about materials, I wanna point this out really quick. When we're talking about like wire fencing, for any kind of like, you know, farm stuff, barn type things, chickens, there are three different kinds, okay? And I'll, I'll tell you what each of them are and then where you might need them. Anywhere, this is my recommendation, anywhere where the actual coop is, where your chickens will be sleeping at night, where something can grab in and like get a chicken because they're sleeping right there, I would use what's called hardware cloth. This is called hardware cloth. It is very, it's not flimsy at all. It's very strong because you can see, and I've got tiny little hands. The opening is only, I mean, it's, maybe a third of an inch it may be even smaller than that and so this stuff a raccoon can't stick their hand in a possum can't stick their hand in because some of those predators they will reach in and just try to grab whatever they can and rip it um so only the smallest like baby snakes would be able to get in there most mice rats all of those other things that you know whether they're egg thieves or they just come and like chew on chicken feathers which i just learned recently mice will do that um you know there's pretty much nothing that's going to be able to get in there and honestly if it's small enough to get in there your chicken's probably going to be able to kill it and eat it I'm just saying so you know chickens can eat baby snakes you know they can eat all kinds of stuff like that um they will kill a mouse if they if they get um, the chance. So hardware cloth is best. Now, do I think you need to use hardware cloth on every single surface for your entire chicken run and on the ceiling and every, no, no. But I do think anywhere that's directly between your bird and a predator, there's nowhere else for your chicken to go. Or like I said, they're going to be most vulnerable at night when they're sleeping. Chickens will sleep through everything literally unless, and that this is kind of you know, morbid, but chickens will sleep through everything unless they are like physically being attacked. And that even goes for like the best rooster, really protective, really good rooster guards. They sleep really deeply. Okay. So anything that's directly where your chickens are going to be sleeping at night, I would use hardware cloth, some coop kits, or like if you're repurposing like a, just a typical garden shed or something, it's not going to have that. So do that. The other thing is like it is here on this coop kit. This is the Omaha model by Rugged Ranch. By the way, we just got this a month or so ago have the hardware cloth stapled on the inside and you want to staple it all over the place with just you know a, a, just a wood staple gun but you want to staple the heck out of it so not just on the corners but staple it frequently but you know it could only be ripped off from the inside that's not going to happen okay so hardware cloth here this coop that's one thing that i like about this coop is every single surface on it that's got in any kind of wiring like that that's you know um that's just a wire it's all hardware cloth and I appreciate that because otherwise I would have to replace that myself the next step as far as wiring is concerned is called chicken wire and chicken wire is the one where the holes are going to be a little bit more of like an inch around like an inch inch and a quarter that's good just as some extra protection but the problem is a lot of snakes are going to still be able to get through and other predators like we were talking about raccoons and possums are two of the big culprits around here um you know, smaller bobcats or, um, I, I know this sounds crazy, but they're around and they'll know that you have chickens because they can hear them and they can smell them. Um, I would not use that. And there's a chicken butt there in the window. <laughs> That's Gracie. Gracie. Tick, 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 tick. She's going to be like, oh my God. Hey, Grace. Tick, tick. 
Um, chicken wire is good for something that I'll show you in a little while. Like if you're putting it down as a border here or if you're using it for just like an exterior wall. I have a lot of extra chicken wire and you can see all of my rolls over there. Um, and I actually plan on, because there are some gaps in the fence and some weak boards, this is an old fence. While we wait to basically save up to replace the fence, I'm going to staple it just on the lower portion all the way around. Just to be some extra reinforcement from, you know, if the neighbor has a dog or if my chickens decide to go adventuring or whatever. But I wouldn't use that as the last source between my chickens or anything. Chicken wire... At, to be honest, I would never buy chicken wire. I would never pay for it. I feel like it's the weakest and the flimsiest of the three. But let's look at the third. The third is called rabbit wire. And it's going to be big rectangles. There's one section right there. So it's a good three inches by one and a half, probably. This is called rabbit wire. The bad news is that the openings are really big. The good news is, though, that you can see that it's fairly stable. It's not super flimsy. It's a thicker wire. And this roll that we get, you can get all of this, you know, like at a tractor supply place. You could buy it online. Hardware stores are really good. Um, maybe even if you have like um, like a Walmart type place, it might have something like that. Garden places would have it. Um, and we're still affixing it, as you can see. But um, for it being as tall as it is and the gaps being as open as it is, it's actually pretty sturdy. We use rabbit wire as just the outside fencing. And I'll say this outside fencing is more to keep my chickens in than to keep anything else out, if that makes sense. So, so far you're thinking about what I need to do for my coop versus what I need to do for my run, if that's you. And that's open because my chickens are in bed. We're going to talk about strategies going from here all the way out and thinking about the predators coming in from three different ways. Predators who are going to dig under, predators who are going to reach through versus predators who are coming. All right, so the girls are locked up and so now we're going to talk about the strategies that I have used on a chicken coop, particularly for the predators who are going to come in at night. Now, at night when your chickens are locked up in a coop, you don't have to worry about the aerial predators. We already talked about the best solution is to have hardware cloth to keep any anybody who's going to try to grab at your birds. The main problem is going to be predators who dig. And I will say that a lot of the predators who will dig, they are intelligent and they are consistent. Meaning, well, persistent might be a better word. Meaning, once they know that there are chickens there, they're going to keep coming back every night until they get somebody. Unless they feel like, this is a waste of my energy, there's no way I'm getting in. In the past, we have used one method, and you can go look on any of the coop videos that have to do with the innovation pet coop. You can look at the coop hacks, and you can look at the other predator video that I have. Just search it here on my channel. But essentially what we used is we made a barrier or a border that went out. Because when a predator shows up and they want to dig underneath, they're going to go here, correct? They're not going to think, well, I need to go here, and I need to dig under this extra layer. So what we did is as we built the coop, we lifted it up on each side and we had chicken wire, which we had folded so it was a good foot out. We put it under the coop and staple gunned all the way around. Now, honestly, if you just put it under the coop, I mean, no predator is going to be able to lift up an entire chicken coop. So what you want, though, is that there's no way it's not stapled to the outside where you can just pop it off. Does that make sense? It needs to be under the coop or inside the coop to start. And then you're basically making just a lip that comes way out and then we had affixed it all the way through with like garden stakes or like tea stakes almost like what you would use when you're building a tent and they just look like you know little sevens or little l's and you you know hammer it or rubber mallet it or whatever all the way down in the ground and that way if a predator comes here and they start digging they're catching on the chicken wire there's no way they can get under so they would have had to start digging over here which nobody's going to figure out and i did that with my innovation pet coop and i didn't have to repair it or change it or do anything for it for like two years and it was no problem at all I will say like I said in my other predator video though you do want to just be alert and be out around your chicken coop on a regular basis look and see if there's signs of somebody digging and crawling that's not a chicken and just you know be checking for weaknesses be checking to see if anything needs to be repaired updated changed, that kind of thing all right so when we built this because we just moved so this is all new we had a horrible problem that's turned into a blessing the problem is that this entire chicken run you can see those of you who are not familiar with this new property this area that I'm standing up on is actually built up about a foot and a half and they've got like a concrete barricade that they made I don't know when they when they made this house 
So we saw it, and of course, as I'm looking at houses, you know, we're touring homes, and I see this, and I'm like, chicken run, like this perfect space. The problem was that this area was, it had a weed barrier in it, and it was completely covered in rocks. Like, it's, it's completely full of rocks. I don't know how well you guys can see. So it's been a total nightmare. <laughs> like, I'm trying to plant this tree, and it's taken me two days to just dig the hole. Like, it's a nightmare. It's just full of rocks. So we tried to do our chicken wire thing, and it didn't work because we couldn't get enough stakes in the ground. Like literally they would hit a rock and we'd move it and they'd hit a rock and we'd move it and they'd hit a rock. And then we'd be trying to use a rubber mallet to hammer them down and the stake would just bend like and just contort into nothing. So what we ended up doing was going to Lowe's. I'm a huge fan of Lowe's. Again, remember no affiliation, I just like them. And this is 20 stones, I think. Yeah, 20 of these pavers that was I think 30 bucks total for 20 of them. And so what we've got is these pavers which unfortunately we had to level the ground, which was a huge pain. And it's still not perfect as you can see, but there's no way that a predator is going to be able to lift up that paver that it, the coop is literally sitting on and holding it down. So in retrospect, once you measure the dimensions of your coop and you know where to lay out the stones and you've leveled the ground, this is absolutely perfect. And I'm not worried about it ever being a problem. You know, it, if it rains in the area like this, the chickens aren't gonna mess with it. It's not gonna get destroyed. It's not gonna get muddy or messed up like done, sold. So that's what we've chosen to do. So basically the things that you want to think about for your coop are, I've given you two ideas already of what you can do. The third option is that you can put an actual floor in your chicken coop in the bottom of it. Like if it's a multi-level like this, you could put either hardware cloth or chicken wire or you can put like a solid panel. I didn't want to do that because I don't want any um, any wire floor on my chicken feet. My chickens have had foot injuries before and chickens hide their injuries. It's, it's just really a pain for them, obviously, but then for you to try to help them and get them, you just nurse them back to health, clean the, the dressing and the wound and all, like it's just, it's just a nightmare. I don't want their toes and stuff catching on it. And then if I was to put a solid panel or something down here, like plywood or something, guess who's going to poop all over it? So, you know, and I've tried putting like a special type of bedding and stuff down in there before. And I mean, they just made it into a dust bath and destroyed it in like two days. So I'm not going to bother doing anything under there. So that's just dirt. That's just the ground. Um, if anything, I might put peat moss. I've got an entire video on peat moss, P-E-A-T-M-O-S-S, -S, which smells good. It's super absorbent. If you've got any kind of zone that's just low and it tends to just be like a mud pit, um, I'm going to buy some once we're done planting in here and just put it not in this whole chicken run, but just around the immediate coop area where I am, you know, where I'm cleaning and getting eggs and stuff like that but I'm not going to bother doing anything special. That is another option. So you've got three options right now that I've taught you on what you can do around the bottom of your coop. You can just put a f actual floor in. Remember, use staple guns and do it on the opposite side. So if you're doing a wire or something on the inside, wrap it around to the outside and staple it around like that. You can do the chicken wire border that goes all the way around just like a skirt. And then, you know, you affix it into the ground or you can do the pavers. The other things we'll talk about with the coop real quick. I already mentioned the hardware cloth. Every surface needs to be hardware cloth stapled from the inside and staple the heck out of it. Don't just do it like once every foot or so, like do a ton of staples. You don't want predators coming and finding a weak spot because like I said, they will be persistent and they will continue to come back. The last thing we'll talk about is you want to have two-step latches and a two-step latch or a predator latch or an intelligent latch is one where you have to do two different things in order to open the door. Okay, this is not the best example. These are going to be upgraded. But a lot of these, like I have to turn this the right way and then I have to pull up in order to open it. So it's not just a little like flip latch. Carabiners work great. I've got one over here on my fence. This is a carabiner. Carabiners work great. There are other spring activated latches that you can see on my other videos. You can go and look them up. The hardware is not expensive to buy, but you want a two part latch on any door that goes directly to your chickens. Okay, so that's everything as far as predator proofing for the coop. And remember, that's the area where they sleep at night. And then, of course, where they're going to go in a couple of hours of daylight later to go lay eggs. So that's where their food and water is. But that's the coop level of the predator proofing. <laughs> now, on this next level of predator proofing, I wanted to point out a couple of little side notes. And then we'll talk more about perimeter fencing and ideas for just keeping animals out of your chicken zone. Hey, Bluebird. Someone's been laying an egg. So, like I said, this video is all about pretty much every idea I can think of, me just kind of going bleh and telling you everything. 
to where you can pick and choose what would work for your setting. Some of you don't have like an open yard area. You know, some of you, you have acreage, like it just kind of depends. But a couple of other things you might have thought, you might not have thought of, excuse me, is um, lighting, whether it's solar lights or floodlights or something like that. I honestly, because we just moved here and this whole zone is new and different to me, the coop as well. I just got some solar lights and then I've got them mostly pointed either at this side of the coop or almost more um, at the gate itself. Like, so I don't like, hey genius, don't trip when you come in here. Um, these lights are from the Dollar Tree actually. So they were a dollar each and they work just fine. They're not super bright, um, but just having some kind of lighting either to help you getting in and out of the area, you know, if you come in at night or I just feel like something that's more lit might make predators a little bit more hesitant to come in. Maybe it doesn't make a difference at all, but it made me feel better. So consider lighting. The other thing, as I mentioned earlier, there are different kinds, excuse me, of outdoor cams, game cams, things like that. You could also consider putting something like a baby monitor inside your coop if you want to that could just help alert you or maybe, um, you know, it has, maybe you don't even have the screen on, like you don't use video, yes. <laughs> or visual at all you just want to hear it um i know i have at least one follower on youtube who says like she has a baby monitor you know and one end of it is here and the other end is by like her bed but it's not video it's only audio and that way if there is some kind of oh my gosh excuse me some kind of attack or commotion or whatever she can hear it so that's totally optional i know a lot of that depends on like you know how strong would the signal be out here and do you have any kind of electrical um hookup out here or you know there's a lot of different factors, but it's just something to consider. So think about lighting for at night and think about if you want any kind of camera or anything like that. All right. So now what we're going to talk about is, you know, as we're backing away. So in, in my honest opinion, if you haven't done a ton of stuff for like the perimeter of your chicken run, that's one thing because that's going to be more for predators that would happen during the day. Please, please, please do everything that you can for the coop at night because that's when your chickens are the most vulnerable and that's where, you know, there's nowhere for them to run. There's nowhere for them to hide. I mean, they're already confined in that little space. So we'd already talked about the three different kinds of wire. So if I was to give you a test, do you remember what this is called? This is rabbit wire. So again, like you can see, it's not, it's not easy for me to like bend it or anything like that, but the gaps in it are pretty, pretty big. Now what we have here, I have in some older videos, if you check out on my coop playlist here, there's one about building a run where we built a run with one of our older homes. And this is, I just call it the T post because that looks like a capital letter T there. But essentially it's a post where uh, we use like really, really big nails and hammer it in so that it's, you know, it's stuck in the ground. And then what I really thought was clever and it works perfectly with rabbit wire. This is another small piece of two by four that I can turn so that I can hook it onto the rabbit wire and then I turn it 90 degrees and now it's holding that rabbit wire in place. So it's sort of like an adjustable, removable T-post. Make sure that you use um, either wood. I don't, I wouldn't say it necessarily has to be treated for outside, but certainly seal it because it's gonna be, you know, obviously outside in the elements with the hot and the cold and rain and everything else. And then, you know, just check on stuff like this on a regular basis, make sure that it's still doing what it needs to do. And then, yes. I would say if you're going to have something that's only five feet tall, make sure that you've clipped your chicken's wings. I do have a video about that also. My girls do not fly and they actually only have one wing clipped. So if you just do one per bird per year, then you should be good. And you don't have to clip their wings again until they've molted again because then those feathers fall off. And the new ones are not clipped, obviously. But I have my girls with their wings clipped. And another side note about <laughs> Flopsy's back there behind a rock. Another side note about that, make sure that um, if you've got a fence that doesn't have a, a roof on it, right, there's not a ceiling on mine right now, make sure that your chickens can't hop from one thing to another thing and sort of like parkour out of the chicken run. That storage bin that's over there is outside their space because if I had it here, they could hop onto the bin and then they could hop over the fence. So any structure that you're going to have, if you don't have a roof on your entire chicken run, make sure they can't hop onto something and then hop over, which is why the coop is like smack in the middle of their space. My girls can hop and they can sort of, you know, they can, like the Buzz Lightyear, they can fall with style. They can kind of jump, but they're not, they're not able to really fly.
So I would say do rabbit wire here. Now let me tell you real quick with our perimeter what we're planning on doing and then we'll talk aerial cover. What we're planning on doing is, I believe they're called King Ranch is the brand. And they're just, a, they're posts that have funny little like, I don't know what you would call them, like hooks on them at different heights so that you basically hammer or, you know, you, you dig a hole and use concrete or whatever and you put these posts in the ground and they're like an army green and they're metal. And, you know, they come at different heights, five feet tall, seven feet tall, whatever. And they're not expensive. I, I think they're like less than 10 bucks each. And essentially what you can do is you mount the posts into the ground and then you can mount, you know, your wiring or fencing or whatever to that. So what we want to do at bare minimum, you know, I want to have something better on that end and obviously on that end. And then I want to sort of designate a better, like a more specific door space. I don't like that gap being right there. So what I'm thinking about doing is putting one of those posts right there in that gap. So that blocks that space, first of all. And then it also makes my doorway a lot more narrow, which means this rabbit wire won't be as like and like fall over because when I'm trying to come in here and I've got my arms full of, you know, chicken food or I'm bringing their waterer back in, I've I filled up their water bucket or whatever. I don't want this thing like hanging open because my chickens, as they get more comfortable in this zone, they're going to get out of here. So I just want to stabilize the rabbit wire a bit more. Honestly, the posts that we have right now, these T posts are the ones that we've just brought from house to house and we built them God, probably two years ago, two and a half years ago, and they've held up very well. But the problem is this is one really long space here. So we just don't have enough posts. Does that make sense? We had to divide them up over a longer distance and I want something in shorter increments. So we want to get those and I believe they're called King Ranch. And like I said, they're just they're just fence posts and they're metal and then you can just kind of hook stuff on it whatever level or height you want. So we want to do that. I don't think it's necessary for you to necessarily um you know dig a hole and then put concrete in and then put the post in. That really depends on you. If your chickens have a safe place to go, especially at night, I wouldn't worry about that very much. But that just kind of depends on you. You kind of need to, to just be walking around. And again, check out my other predator video because that talks more about like how to tell if you have a predator and how to just like walk the perimeter and look for signs and things like that. But what? So the last thing I want to talk about, and this is something that I'm going to explain to you, and I will do an update video here on my channel once we've actually done it, and that has to do with aerial cover. Now, again, if your chickens are in a kennel or something where, where they already have like a ceiling 24-7, then then you've already done this. But we're talking about if you've got any kind of hawk, falcon, owl in the area that could come and grab your birds. I would say this is especially important if you have no trees around. This is important if you have really a really big area and like nowhere for your chickens to go and hide if they see somebody swooping. If you pay attention to your chickens, you'll notice that they, they kind of take turns watching the sky and they'll make their little warning sounds. their short little clucks and they'll kind of tell each other like, hey, I heard something, hey, what was that? But they really need, you know, shaded places, either, you know, I'm going to be putting landscaping in here. I'm going to get some like bush type things where like they can go and hide, that kind of thing. If they can't make it all the way over to the coop. But, you know, if you've got a really like long, narrow area or or whatever, you know, if, you're, if it's not already covered, I would, I would seriously consider doing something like that. And the cheapest and easiest thing would be to get what's called bird netting. And it's a nylon netting that's about two inch square. And it's just a nylon netting, which means it's going to be completely flimsy, right? Because it's just fabric. But it's not expensive. And you can get different dimensions. You know, you could get a roll that's 20 feet by 20 feet. Or you can get one that's 30 feet by 50 feet or whatever. And essentially, all you're going to do is affix it to the top of your fence all the way around. And then the thing is totally covered. This is the type of netting that you could use if you've got like, you know, a strawberry patch or a garden and you don't want birds and squirrels and stuff getting into it. So like I said, it's, it's two inch square, so it's not super tiny. But if you're just trying to keep like a big predatory bird from like swooping down and grabbing a chicken, or especially if you have chicks, if you have, you know, you let your, your hens hatch their eggs and stuff, then that's what, you, what you're worried about. You're at this point, you're just trying to keep big stuff out. Okay. So that kind of stuff. I mean, literally you're just going to use either zip ties or like a heavy duty staple gun and just to fix it all the way around. Here's why I haven't done it yet. And I'll say that netting is not very expensive. I think I don't want to misquote, but this is early 2020. I, I think I can get at least 20 feet by 20 feet for like $18. So it's not that it's expensive. Number one, it's kind of a pain. 
And then the problem that I have is this is such a big area that that stuff's just gonna hang down. And I come in here into my chicken run like every day multiple times and so it's gonna be like, like I'm gonna have to be ducking to get underneath it. So what we're trying to do is get those tall like seven foot posts and then get something really tall like we keep joking about like a maypole in the coop build videos and getting something almost like a circus tent and then the nylon can drape in every direction from that. That magnolia tree is going in the ground but once he's in the ground he's only gonna be like four feet tall. So our problem is we just need to have something that's that's tall enough to hold the nylon netting up. Now, if you wanted to do something else overhead, there are advantages and disadvantages that if you wanted to do more like a tarp or like a solid, almost like a tin roof type situation, in that case, I would make sure, first of all, that you have it angled so that it doesn't hold like snow, for example. You need to have it angled and have it angled. I know my phone's trying to focus. Have it angled so that the high point is at the center of the coop or the center of the run, and that way all the extra rain or snow or, or dead leaves or whatever falls on it is falling down and away from your chickens and not like right into the middle of the chicken yard. But the other thing you want to keep in mind is sometimes there's, there is good to having just a netting. So you need to think about like, okay, are my chickens going to, is that area going to die if rain never gets on it? Because I put like a cover, like a roof over here. Are they still going to have, an, it, it kind of, it solves some problems and it creates other problems. So you just need to think about ventilation. You need to think about insulation. You need to think about, you know, whatever kind of plants you have there. Are they going to get enough sun? Are they still going to get rain? All of those things to consider. Um, I had someone <laughs> sort of like joking but not joking say, well, you could just get different for this run because it's sort of like a weird, it's like an oblong shape almost. Um, but it's, I mean, it's at least... 30 or 40 feet long. I think, I think it's 50 feet long if I remember correctly. And they were like, well, you can just get tarps and strategically place them through, but then give yourself like a pathway where you can walk with your head and not have to duck down. So, you know, you could do for aerial protection, you know, things coming from the air, you could do the nylon netting. You could do something more like a lean to or a tarp or like I said, tin roofing, you know, go find some scraps of stuff and like build like lean twos. But you just want to think every time it rains or every time it snows, where's all the excess going to go? You want to think about which way it's going to fall. I would definitely put it at an angle. And then the other thing you've got to be aware of, I think I was helping Rich with this when he was building his setup in Florida. You don't want to build anything like we talked about earlier. If I was to build a lean to structure here against my fence, let me try to get over without stepping in a hole. If I'm trying to build a lean-to here to the fence, but I make it kind of low, now I've I've made a solution of now they have somewhere to hide, but now the problem is, now they're gonna jump on it, and now they're gonna go over. So it's kind of like, ugh, especially with the aerial protection, which is why I haven't done it yet. You know, it was like priority. We just need to get the chickens in here. We need to get them safe. Um, I've just adopted a new dog who likes to chase chickens, so I'm working on training her. But it's kind of like as you fix one problem, you need to make sure that you're not creating other ones. Yes, now I have a lean-to and they've got more shade. Like that's important for me here in South Texas. They've got some shade. They've got like a little zone where they can like go and hide out real quick. But now I've just given them like, doing, like a way for them to escape. So that's not good. So you just kind of need to think about that. And especially, like I said, with the overhead coverage or the overhead protection, you just need to be careful that you're not creating other problems. Because you may think that you're helping yourself and then the first time it rains, you know, now you've created a flood zone right next to the coop or something like that. So, uh, this has been a very extensive video. And again, this is more about, these are all of the different structures and all of the things you can build and buy and set up to keep predators out. If you want to talk more about like, how do I know if there's a predator? What kind of checks should I do every day and every night or on a regular basis? That's the other all about predators video that you can search here on my channel. I know that this can be really confusing. I know that a lot of what should I do or what should I buy or where should I put this has to do with your particular setup. I know it's very individual. I mean, everything from, do you know which way your house face faces? You know, do you know which way the north wind is gonna blow like when you put your coop together? There's a ton of different stuff where you can start to overanalyze. So if it helps you, this is my email address. This is for all things chicken. So you are welcome to send me a picture of your setup and like, hey, what do you think I should do here? Hey, I've got this right now. Do you think I need to replace this material? But I think the things that will help you the most are 
finding people in your area who have chickens. And even if it's like a secret cult, you know, and you have to kind of like, you know, meet behind closed doors or whatever, I'm sure there are people in your area who have chickens and they will know not only like, hey, these are the main predator problems that we have in the area, but you know, some people, they maybe they have a hundred chickens or maybe they've had chickens for 10 years and they can tell you the tried and true things that work. You might be able to get, you know, free chicken wire or free fence posts or free stuff from them. You guys could share ideas, talk shop, all kinds of stuff. So I think that's the best thing that you could do. And the other thing that always helps is to, you know, I, I would suggest checking around with prices. You know, if you have a truck and you can go pick up huge rolls of rabbit wire, or you could go buy gigantic posts, you know, that, that might save you money as opposed to having it shipped. Um, and then the other thing is just consider if you can afford it. And if you have the time, I know some of you guys, you know, you're dealing with, um, you know, you have health conditions, so it's difficult for you to get outside and construct stuff or you live alone or you're kind of in an isolated area. So I apologize, but if it's possible, it might be better for you to do more of these things than less and kind of like, oh, well, I don't want to do a lot right now because I haven't lost any chickens yet. You know, how are you going to feel if you lose a bird and you could have prevented it? I haven't lost any birds yet due to predators. I have lost two birds due to heat because I didn't have enough ventilation in my chicken coop and I will never forgive myself for that. And that's one of the things, um, you know, that I preach heavily on this channel is about um, ventilation versus insulation and having the good balance for your coop because that's how I've lost the two chickens that I have um, that I've buried basically so you are welcome to send me pictures you're welcome to um, you know ask questions if you don't want to ask here on the YouTube channel you can email me but I ask if you've got a suggestion or a strategy or something for you that works put it here in the comments of this video and that way people can see it I certainly don't know everything um, you know, all of our circumstances are different. A lot of us have more experience or we are in different environments. You know, some people aren't dealing with coyotes. They're dealing with, I don't know, um, you know, different kinds of, of predators, different kinds of animals, and they found different solutions that I don't even know of. The only problem is, I'm sorry, in these comments, you cannot post your own pictures or video. So make your own channel then and link it here and we can all continue to help each other. But my goal here on this long-winded video, I apologize, but the goal is I wanted to just throw like every idea that I've got at you and that way you can pick and choose what works for you and your little flock. So, Blue, what you doing, girl? But it is a chilly day here in March and we hope that everybody is safe and well. I actually am going to finish compiling training a new dog to be around your chickens that video is almost done and then i'm going to do one about plants also because that's another passion of mine so lots of content is coming soon but again you've got my email address you're welcome to put questions comments suggestions down here hey guys it's real simple mama and real simple dad here and at the end of this predator video i wanted to show you how we're sort of revamping the entire way that we do predator proofing under our coop. This is the third chicken coop that we have owned. And I apologize, there's roofers working and that's why I'm throwing this down at the end of the main predator proofing video. But essentially, our first coop was also a kit and it had the chicken wire, which is now over there. Stuff that you don't wanna use on the windows of your coop. Again, like we've been talking about the different materials. But it's okay because essentially this was going to be a grid on the ground to keep any type of predator either during the day or at night to be able to keep them from digging underneath and then going up into the coop. The problem in this area, as you can see with my poor husband, this particular ground, <clears throat> like you guys might have seen in some of the other Coop Build 2020 videos, this ground used to be like literally just rocks. So even us getting, um, and I don't have them here anymore, The we started with these, let me walk over here and I'll show you. Starting with these garden stakes, couldn't hammer them in the ground because this metal that they're made out of just wasn't strong enough, so they were just bending with our rubber mallet. Then we tried going and buying very thin U-hooks, which basically just look like gigantic staples where the two ends are much longer. They're very, very slender, but they're strong. Couldn't even get those in there. Yes, hello. Um, so what we're gonna do is just use a solid paver route. Um, one of our garden places has chickens at the nursery and this is the method that they've done. And essentially what we're gonna do, I'm trying to not mess up his counting. And essentially what we're gonna do is have a solid line of pavers all along the edge of the border of the coop. So you need to make sure the ground is level, which is what he's been working on because the ground here is just absolutely terrible in this run. And then you need to know the dimensions of your coop 
all of these pavers that we bought, I'll, I'll count later how many there actually are, but all of those pavers were about 30 bucks. Hey, babe. And <clears throat> we're gonna set the coop on top of the pavers, half in and half out, so that there's not gonna be a way for a predator to get under it. Cause even if the predator was smart enough to realize I just need to lift up the paver, they can't cause the coop is sitting on it and holding it down. So it'll be easy for us now that it's level if we feel like we need to add another layer all the way around that we can. But um, Rich, I hope you appreciate this cause this is gonna kind of be like, you know, Legos for grownups. We're just gonna build a little bit. And honestly, it's just this ground the, the space in the area is absolutely great for the chickens, but the ground is terrible. As you can see, it's just like solid rocks. So that's what we we're dealing with, getting our predator proofing, but so help me God, the chickens are coming today. <laughs> so we're gonna knock this out the best we can. I'm basically bring them over here in the evening, which will be fine. And then I'll also be doing a video about introducing your dog to chickens because Penny has gotten to meet them once. She's very interested in chasing them and making them fly around and... Penny Lane. That's the face of chaos and anarchy right there. So you kind of see what our struggle was, but I wanted to put that at the end. So um, if you've got any questions, suggestions, there are so many good ideas and so many different things that, that you can do. You guys always have such great ideas. You're so kind and supportive and we love y'all very much. So we'll be back soon.